the main aim of this work was that uh, there is a saying that uh, Ethiopians uh, are, have very bad uh, working culture. Uh, I don't know where this uh, thing is comes from, but it's a fact in most of the, even the university guys and professors uh, believe in it. Uh, but on this side, I was just standing uh, again at this saying, and I believe uh, even in, di uh, in difficult circumstances, uh, th there are some people uh, working hard uh, to protect th their families and to feed their, uh, to cover their uh, their uh, expenses and uh, without uh, anybody's help. So I just want to showcase their passion and strength. Uh, through this uh, project. And please note that I'm a first timer on this photojournalism. Don't apologize. Yeah. Don't get that hard on me, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm expecting Daniel Bear who looks work. Okay. <laughs> uh, as you can see on the bottom of the picture, she sells uh, the teapots uh, and some equipments for uh, coffee making ceremony. She don't talk that much, and she won't allow me to uh, uh, know about her private life. But I asked one of her co uh, her neighbor, and she told me that with Rotanani uh, has uh, a very old and retired husband, and she's the one to feed him and also to take care of all the, her family's expenses, and also she's responsible to help her daughter who's learning in um, water. In, uh, water engineering in uh, Alabama University. Uh, this is uh, Sun Knight. While I was talking with Sun Knight, and, uh, uh, there was this guy who came here and begged for one piece of onion. But unconsciously, Sun Knight gave him two pieces of onion. And at this moment, I just captured this picture. And after that, the guy put back the one onion and he took only one piece of onion. And I just curious and I asked the guy afterward why he took only one piece of onion. And he told me that one is enough for today. And I like this picture. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, uh, Sunlight uh, sells uh, some onions and ve vegetables and even she's, uh, she's became able to share from what you have. You see how the woman in the middle is dead smack in the middle and you have two things happening right on the side of her. You have that engagement of the man reaching for the onion. So you guys see this photo and you're like, I like that photo, but I don't know why I like it so much. It's just nice, I don't, I don't know. But you guys do know, right? You can articulate it. You can say, I like it because it's composed well. There's emotion here. There's interaction between two people here. I feel something. There's a beautiful story behind the, the, the situation, right? So you kind of get a sense and a feeling as to actually like you're there with in this situation with it, right? It's beautiful. Um, good job. She's a single mom. And as you can see, she's selling this kind of uh, spice. I think it's parsley. And she's the responsible to raise her daughter by herself. And th this is what she do for a living. This is Atu Mabratu. He's a farmer and he owns this ship. He fattens the ship and the goats. And uh, he's a father of four. Uh, and he has been in this work for the last 13 years. And he thinks that he's successful. I like this picture because uh, there is some kind of thing uh, I can read uh, from his face. He's kind of successful man. Did you ask him to pose for the photo? No. Okay. Yeah. Did you speak with him at all? Yeah. Okay. And he was okay with you taking his photo? Yeah. Okay. And I gave him back the pictures and he was excited. Okay. Not only him actually, this is Yarid uh, and this is uh, his son. And while I was talking to his guy, uh, his father, uh, he, he was standing behind me and uh, he gave me this pose and he offered me to take a picture of him. It's a beautiful portrait. Yeah. This is a portrait, talking. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful.
And I like his uh, expression. He's kind of proud. Mm-hmm. And even as he told me, he's, uh, he's proud of uh, uh, helping his father on his work. Mm-hmm. And this is Brano. He makes a rope. Uh, and uh, th- this is what he do for a living. Uh, he makes a rope out of the thing. Uh, he bought it from the market and uh, he add a kind of value and uh, he made it like this and he sell that and he's able to cover his all uh, e- expenses by this work. And I like the composition uh, between his legs and his hands and he was too quick and fast. And I, I believe he masters... Uh, of what he's doing. The reason I make this picture black and white is the, the inner part of his uh, foot was kind of yellowish and it's kind of weird and, and I don't like it related with the uh, upper part of his uh, hands and foot. It's kind of weird. So I prefer to make it uh, black and white and now I think it looks good. So this is, remember when we spoke about scale yesterday, when we looked at Daniel's work and we had an overhead shot, we had a portrait, we had a tight shot, medium body shot, group shot, in terms of just sequencing and having a variety of shots, right? This is considered a tight shot. So he zoomed in, what, what were you shooting with? The camera? Yeah, what kind of? 50. Mark so you were shooting with a pro camera. Mm. Um, so this is a type of shot where it's important to get this kind of shot, where you zoom into a detail, and it helps in give variety when you're looking at 20 images from a series to have a tight <coughs> shot, which helps in the variety of, of, of images. I could look at this photo, and the caption could say, um, a 50-year-old man in New York is twisting a thing for his daughter's hair on his toe. And that's just the information from the, the, the photographer who sent that in with this photo. Or the caption could say what is actually happening, right? It could describe who this person is, what this person's doing, and all that stuff. So it doesn't actually matter the audience. It matters what is the information that comes with the photo, which is more important, right? So context, the who, what, where, when, why that's attached to this one image. Uh, this picture has not, nothing to do with the main story that I'm uh, working with, but I like the picture. And uh, we have been discussing about the depth of field. The... And I thought this picture can tell about that. This was a... Uh, the leather. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, the leather. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, in the past few uh, weeks, uh, we, we have been dis- discussing about the depth of field. The depth of field. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I think this picture can tell about that. And I named this picture Afterlife. You can say it's because then it becomes art, right? Then it becomes an art piece where it's not a piece that's running with a story or in a journalism context or a magazine context. But if it's running in a magazine or journalism or newspaper context, you can't just have a title. It has to have information that goes with it. Detail information. But explain. if it's a museum mm. and it's more considered an art piece, then sure, you can give it a title. This is uh, Jamal, and uh, he was uh, addicted for for the last uh, six years. He was addicted for uh, to uh, drugs and alcohol. Uh, and, and as he told me, his life was uh, miserable until he met his girlfriend last year. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, in these years, uh, she, help, uh, she helped him to focus on his work and to be a better person and also to cure uh, his uh, addiction. Uh, and now he's about to get married on the coming year. And what is he doing yeah. here? He's working? Uh, he's a technician and he's uh, welding. Welding. Yeah. This is actually um, quite a successful picture if you see it on screen because the light is coming from this whirling structure at the bottom, right? And it gives just enough light on his face, right? Everything else is black. And so you see just, it's almost like a haunting image, right? His face just glows underneath the glow of the light. And so you focus on his face and of that big ball of flames underneath. Mm. Now, if I read the caption and it says he's recovering from an addiction 
this works even better because it's like this dark sort of moody, you know, thing, this guy who's recovering and the light is sort of hitting his face and it's kind of like creepy. Um, so it may work, you know, maybe not all photos have to be super bright and super, but I think it's super, I think it's effective. It works. And his hat yeah. says, yo, you know, it's personality and it's tight. It's not too far back. So you can kind of, it's like, it's kind of dark mm. and eerie. And this is where they live. God is watching over them. And so this is an overhead shot. Yeah. You see the community. Yeah. It's great. This is not your first time photographing. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Yes, it is. I'm seeing here a very good picture, but I'm sorry it's on, on the screen. Uh, this is uh, like late night and it's uh, like almost five. And I've been uh, waiting uh, outside because it was too dark. There was no uh, on, on the roadside, uh, no light on the right. And I've been waiting like uh, for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, working with my uh, ex exposure triangle thing to adjust my camera. And I have seen no one comes in or out of this bar. And, but this guy is just sitting and waiting for his customers at that time. And uh, as he told me, he works for about 16 hours per day from the morning till the midnight. And he owns the bar. And uh, after I showed the, this picture and I approached him and I asked him what's going on and uh, what's he doing here at this late night time. Uh, he told me uh, that he's uh, waiting for his customers and the, the story that I've told you. And this woman, I saw th this woman comes in uh, and I took this picture. And also I asked him about the woman who she is. And he told me that she is his wife and she uh, brought him a dinner. Um, the fact that he used natural things to frame his subjects. So his subject has, that guy is framed by the window. And then there's this light, this little, again, this blue light that comes out. And then there's another frame of a subject coming out. So not only is, so the photo, a photo is like, like that, right? But then inside that frame, he has multiple frames. So he's got multiple shapes going on. And then in terms of the rule of thirds, there's a big black space right in the middle and it splits something happening on the right and something happening on the left. And they're both lit, right? You have someone coming in and someone looking out, right? So it's just this, all of these things that work together that make it sort of like, I want to see more. I want to continue viewing his work. I developed some idea from this guy. Maybe he, he's waiting some job. That's why I think this picture. This is so beautiful. Why does this photo work? And why do you think I like it? You know why I like it. You see this guy looking at the car and then you see this little leg poking out right in the corner. And you're kind of like, who's in the car? What's going on in this car? And it just shows a very good scene. It's a good scene setter, right? I want to go see what's going on there. It's so interesting. And the sky is just beautiful blue and it does not look like it was taken with a phone at all, right? He's some guy. He's selling the illegal market, but he tried to read something. That's why I take this. This one. Now, why did you guys clap? <laughs> <laughs> what works? People wait in the taxi, but there's no taxi, it's come from, <laughs> that's why. When you see the shadow, they are expected that the taxi, the people, but another one, I don't know this, Gary. Yes, courage. Courage? Yes, around the same sea. Around the same sea. Yeah. So one of the cool things about playing with images, one thing that we did with uh, Abby's work is he played with nighttime and darkness, right? He played a lot with using dark to split his frames and used framing of things to play with his lighting and stuff like that. Other things that you can play with are mirrors. 
reflection, right? Seeing reflection, shadows, right? You don't see the people, but you see their shadows. You see them there and you know that they're waiting for a taxi and you just sort of have this idea of this is what the idea is to wait and the shadows are on the floor playing with light and shadows, right? So reflection, shadows, darkness, sunlight, you play with these elements and it makes it more interesting and more fun. It's not just like some, me sitting on a stage. Maybe it's the shadow of my hand that you capture instead, you know, with the newspaper kind of thing. So. It's interesting. The composition is interesting. I like more so the fact that the shadows are lined up on the, the, the ground. So for that sake, yeah. Um, Maybe I would have waited until the carriage came a little bit closer to the middle. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the middle, um, but it works. It's perfectly fine, just like that. It works. Because the shadows on the floor is really what makes the photo. Her name is uh, Wizaro Sunudu. She's selling some seats. Time to lunch for him. That's what I think. Around the market. We talked about layers or the multiple things happening. Foreground, middle ground, background. There's so many nice layers. The guy is in the foreground, the woman's in the middle, then you have all the things happening in the back. And they just sort of line up really nicely. And then the colors just sort of bring it all together really well. Did you edit these photos with the... Little bit, uh, I use a uh, Snapseed. Snapseed, yeah. cool. This one also around the uh, Mercato. Uh, it's, it's time to pray for him. Was that a moving vehicle or was the car part? No, they are saying it's illegal. The car in the frame? I don't know, maybe. So one of the things that you want to think about when you're shooting is to avoid things like cars that may distract the subjects. So maybe I would have gone on the other side of them. So stood on the side of the car and shot that way so that the car wouldn't be in it. Um, Sometimes I like to just avoid things that just don't add to the photo, right? It doesn't add, the car there doesn't actually add. It may have been more effective for, for you to actually stand where the car is okay. and to shoot that okay. way. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then it's like, okay. it's not like the car is like a part of their story. It's like, or if the car was moving and driving, I would have waited for the car to pass okay. and then I would have shot that okay. same way. This one is to compare. Uh, the modern and the cultural uh, coffee maker. The culture is outside, the modern is inside. That's why I compare yeah. that. I took this picture. <laughs> I would, if I was sending it to an international audience, I wouldn't assume that a viewer would know or a photo editor would know those nuances. I would actually include a sentence in that. So traditional coffee shop outside of a modern da 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 da. In today's modern society in Ethiopia, seeing da 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 da. You know what I mean? Just sort of explain it in one sentence if it's an international audience. But if it's um, for Ethiopian paper, maybe you don't need to say that. Maybe it's a basic caption, right? When we talk about, do I shoot for an international audience? It doesn't actually matter. It matters more what the information comes with it, right? This guy Haji, his name is Haji. He's, he, he purchased some, uh, some seats. That's why. Okay. His name is Yonata. He watching television. Is the idea to shoot him watching television? Yeah. So why don't I see the television? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. What does the home look like? So maybe you send in that photo, but maybe you also do a, a horizontal and you back up. 